spoke to Dolly Young, professor of political science at the University of Chicago. Well, certainly the uh, biggest difference is growth has slowed down substantially. The latest headline number uh, during the last quarter was 6.9 percent. Of course, 6.9 percent is uh, a very good number for most economies, but the Chinese economy had been used to something like double digits for the last 20 years or so. So for companies, for local governments who de depend the, on the growth, of course, it feels like a recession. They have to adjust their parameters, their behavior, and their expectations about the future. And of course, the challenge is also, in the past, China became very used to uh, growth based on cheap labor, cheap environment, and so on. And that actually has become less sustainable. And of course, um, as a result, the Chinese government has to come up with policies to allow for the economy to adjust. Yeah, and this adjustment calls for essentially a uh, sort of raise, if rise, if, if you will, to a higher quality economy. Uh, uh, help us understand what that means and what does it look like over the next five years? Well, that's a great question in terms of quality. I think actually there are several dimensions. Quality in terms of technology and innovation. Quality in terms of uh, distribution, because historically labor share of the GDP had been very low over the last 25 years or so. So therefore, the Chinese government wants to uh, the econ economic growth to be more broadly uh, distributive in terms of the benefits. And also uh, sustainable development in terms of the environment. All of those are factors that need to be considered. The challenge, however, is sometimes these different goals can also uh, come into conflict against each other. So inclusive, uh, inclusive, innovative, and sustainable, those are the three key words. In terms of what the government can and can't do, I mean, obviously this is a very big challenge. A lot of people forget how large China is, not, not just in terms of size, but the number of people that need to be working every single month, or at least those even coming into the workforce. It, it, it seems to me that the challenge is, is so great and so difficult that you need more than perhaps just Beijing working at this. You need private companies involved as well, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, certainly no government can fully micromanage everything, and especially when economy has become more market-oriented. And that's what the Chinese government has been trying to do. They're adjusting policies, adjusting the incentive structure. For example, there is an effort to uh, convert uh, businesses from the value, uh, from actually so sort of the business tax to a value added tax for service businesses. And that actually helps to provide more incentives for uh, entrepreneurs to set up businesses and so on. And there are also efforts to adjust actually various different kind of tax categories, whether it's the, uh, for example, in terms of the, uh, uh, especially in terms of real estate transactions at this point, to encourage people to buy properties and so on. Uh, what's the number one thing that you're worried about when it comes to the Chinese economy? I think at this point is really uh, in terms of uh, you look at all the cylinders, whether it's exports or domestic demand and so on, they all seem to be slowing down. And we are in you know, sort of an uncharted territory for the managers. And in that sense, actually, the key is to stabilize the economy, to stabilize e expectations. But even that may be challenging as well. But the, good, the silver lining, however, is China's labor force is not growing. And therefore, uh, the fear of massive unemployment uh, uh, is not there as it used to be. Even five years ago, for example, when the global recession uh, uh, came into being, there were massive numbers of people who had to be forced uh, back home. Today, however, actually, so sort of, there continues to be more demand for jobs than there are laborers willing, uh, are labor willing to take the jobs. So therefore, politically and socially, the government is much less worried. But at the same time, however, the Chinese government has uh, uh, learned uh, to dampen expectations in terms of uh, not raising them too much, uh, simply recognizing that uh, you can actually sort of have a decent economic growth rate uh, at 6 7%. In fact, the challenge, however, is to work through the backlog of inventories of debt so that the economy can have a healthy growth uh, clip at yeah. six and a half and seven percent. If you and I, and, and maybe you are, but if, but if if you and I were big foreign investors and we had billions and billions to invest in, in China, for example, what are the signs that we would be looking for to say now is the time to put the money in? 
Well, I think uh, that requires uh, effort to understand the, uh, the uh, issue of supply and demand in each particular sector. There are massive amounts of opportunities in China, but in many sectors, steel, mining, real estate, and so on, there is an oversupply. And obviously, you want to be very cautious in this, those kind of sectors. But at the same time, this is an economy that has uh, moved into the middle income range. There are massive amounts of opportunities in new sectors. The challenge, however, is even there, it tends to be that many companies want to rush into a few areas, and therefore, the danger is massive new supply is created. So I think, actually, for any businesses, they need to be careful to what extent there are actually the kind of uh, safety mode that can be created to allow them to grow and grow at a healthy margin.